remember, like they're losing it to 9Z, they're losing it uh, to Apex, they lost to Spirit. They got kind of close to Spirit, mm -hmm. which is pretty good considering Spirit uh, one of the best teams in the world right now on Ancient. Sure. But it was just a, yeah, interesting decision. All right, well, boys, it's finally time for us to dive into our very f first best of one of today at the PGL CS2 America's RMR. So without further ado, it's Tea Time and Yumi. Jasmine, both the muscle men putting their heads together. Mac and Semphis both with the same idea. Inferno, not the map that either one of us expected to play, Michael, no. but that's what we have over here on the server. Yeah, I mean, what a map that this could be as well. You know, we think about the calling dynamics on this roster, Art having to take up that mantle, but it's a map that Fallen should be very comfortable with as well, so that secondary calling could be a big facet. Going into this pistol round, already a lot of aggression, and Yuri challenging all the way down mid. Carson forced back by a Molotov straight into his watchful eyes, and so Furious start off this pistol with a man up. Yuri's still staying quite aggressive, and they've realized that, but he's only buying space for the banana push to come through. Art and Cello have gone forward. Marky, the only one to find a frag. Furia with nearly a flawless pistol round coming out of it. Good to see, of course, Inferno's map. They haven't had too many reps on, so yeah. you are expecting this to be harder to anti-strat as well for Nouns, but yeah, they opted into it. Yeah, I almost feel like when we went into that veto, weirdly, the, I feel like Nouns probably got blindsided by the fact that, you know, Ancient didn't make it far through the veto. That was something that Furia were targeting themselves, and so, I mean, it's not like Nouns didn't have the, the option between this and an overpass, but they probably weren't expecting to see either of those two maps make it through the veto in the first place. So, nice start here for Furia. Very commanding pistol round, had a lot of utility and actually got all the fights they were looking for. So now it's already put under a little bit of pressure by this very experienced Brazilian core. And Yuri is starting this game with a bit of a chip on his shoulder, just challenging into second middle. Knew they're on pistols, but can't finish off the ace. So there's K Serato to steal that from him. And this is so nice to see early on because Yuri is one of the players on whom there's been a spotlight shined on. Not that he's been having a bad time, but that he's a symptom of what's going on with Furia, right? Everyone's saying this is a guy who's been performing for years. If he suddenly stops, there has to be something wrong with the structure. So getting him activated early on, getting him to farm out those eco frags, getting him to get those eco kills, honestly, that's exactly what I want to see. Yeah, and I think it's just uh, exactly what Dust was saying on the desk. You know, the idea that this team are weirdly like an enigma. You know, you have the experienced player coming in to take in-game leadership, but then as well now he's not doing that. You know, it's the Fury find themselves in a bit of a weird spot. And I think there's a conversation that we had about whether or not they could be upset, especially when we think about how brutal the Swiss system could be. But Fury are just showing so much confidence, so much assertion in the early phases of rounds. Nouns don't feel comfortable at all with how these rounds are starting. That looked like Garson had the right idea. Yuri doesn't go down though, just keeps himself alive long enough to then retrieve the AWP from Fallen's hands, trades out weapons, and now reinforcing that A site. Again, this aggression down mid is catching Nouns off guard. I will say, you know, uh, Fury uh, is a team that kind of felt like they lost their identity a little bit. You know, so much of it felt like it was structured around Art being aggressive. But when you've got Yuri firing on all cylinders, who needs Art? This man could be an aggressive component for this Fury roster. This is very encouraging signs to see out of a Fury that, yeah, maybe you've hit some instability, but now that they're in the Americas, now they're in these RMRs, I mean, they've, they're showing a lot of conviction already. Oh no, Molotov right to himself, but it's Keserato over there to pick up two big frags, make oh. it three, the MP9 spray master, Keserato. Not really what you expect to see. He's iconic with the A1, but maybe he's been hitting the reps on the MP9 as well. I mean, that's exactly what you want out of the bonus round as well. That SMG getting a lot of value from its position. And even though his teammate was in a pretty poor spot, low HP, Molotov's himself out, that weirdly kind of sets Serato up to feast on Nouns, just thinking they found a gap, a vulnerability they could exploit. And this could be troublesome because Nouns, you know, I think especially since they've added a Dren, it feels like they're a team that does very well front running because they go go into most of their early gun rounds with a specific plan. Hard to make that plan for Inferno, of course, but yeah. remember, they opted into this. Fallen, such an aggressive line, but can't quite hit the shot. A lot of jiggle peaks on the other side of it. And of course, as far as the nouns instigators are concerned, you have to be looking towards Marky and George to potentially be putting things together. Before, a lot of the time, it felt like it was just Marky who would be having most of the aggressive firepower, but like Dust mentioned, George has been slotted in very nicely. Yeah, both him and Junior coming in from that EG roster as basically as soon as they were available, now snatched them up pretty damn quick too. I've heard good things about that EG lineup, to be honest, from the Brax at the very least, that apparently 
They were one of the best practicing teams, but didn't translate through to officials. Probably a lot of pressure, all of that stuff comes with the EG brand. Maybe this is where they can make their names once again. But Kei Serato's already got a big name. Cello is just adding to the legend. Oh, wow. I mean, Furia just look so solid at the start of this game. Nouns can barely get a look in, and surely that's against pistols, but they do so without taking any casualties on Furia too. There's been two deaths so far in Fury. Yeah. <laughs> well, <man. laughs> yeah. Across four rounds. Yeah. That seems like it's a good number to have, you yeah. know? <laughs> I mean, Yuri off with a flying start, yet to fall. 0 0.5 DPR across the team. Eesh. I'm not a stats man, but <laughs> that doesn't seem like You'd one you want to You'd want a little bit more if you're a North American <laughs> fan. And of course, I won't lie, I was on the Twitter right before this. I was tweeting out right before this. Now it's going to take this home. Um, who's home? <laughs> Who's home and who's taking who from what? I do I do like this Nouns roster because I do think that there are some really solid pieces in terms of, you know, you're talking about Marky and George as like this pair that are able to bounce off one another uh, quite well. CJ in general as well looks very solid on this roster. I think, you know, when you think about Junior coming into this team, he's someone that has always basically had this... Uh, identity around him of when he's competing in North America against other North American teams, he farms. Yeah. And I mean, you know, he's put, he's putting up like weirdly, you know, and, and I'm sure he made this comparison to himself, you know, simple type of numbers <laughs> within the North American region. But the translation to that, you know, going overseas has, I think, been made one of his main difficulties. I think, you know, that EG project actually did quite a lot for him in terms of, you know, expanding his playbook a little bit. I think it probably humbled him a, 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 quite a fair bit as well because he kind of found himself at the top levels of America's Counter-Strike and then quickly sort of descended into a bit of a loo where we weren't sure where he was going to end up. Nouns need to start fighting back now, though. Molotov goes deep, it'll be good at isolating out Shallow. Art won't really be able to help him beyond a single flashback that he has, but there's no pressure being asserted beyond it. Good made. Very good. In the meanwhile, though, Nouns doesn't feel like they have any map, map control. Marky's trying to go find some more space back in apartments where he will be uncontested, but... What is the trade-off going to be? Fallen maintaining a very aggressive angle. It's something he used to be famous for, but not able to get the shot off right now. And George is punished only to be traded by Yuri twice over. Yuri maintains his fiery form. This man is the undying Fallen serving as, as bait effectively. It's not like Fallen couldn't have had around himself, but there's the contingency plan. Yuri 11 and 0. And it feels like every time Nouns feel like they can take an inch, there's Yuri there to greet them with a swift punch in the face. Alto over to Yuri, trying to force him out. Is a little bit late to spread in, but Marky still punishes. Now, Kei Serrano Ooh. found as well. He's expecting the short push to maybe come through, but instead it's the verticality that catches him off. That's a danger of Marky. I mean, those are massive entries there from Marky. That second shot, look, I mean, there's nothing you can really uh, fall on the player. Junior burning to a crisp, <laughs> but finally finds a bit of space inside the smoke. Oh my <laughs> god, I don't he know just, how he he's just, alive. Just completely slims himself between the bullets. Two more inches on the waistband and he would have been gone. Art, however, still looking to compete inside this round. They've got so much money from earlier on, and Art wants to just continue to punish Garson now. Not able to find the first. Art just walks in with a triple kill. That's uh, the explosive nature of Art. Crept himself out of the apartments, had the perfect read as to basically where everyone was. As soon as he saw that player within the mini pit, just kept Carson locked in. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do when you're, that box is getting spammed around the corner. He wanted to peek into Art and find that isolated frag, but it's the apartments that seems to be the, the crux of the issue for both of the squads. You know, Marky got this double kill and then Art on the retake, just so unrelenting. And it does feel like that's where Nouns had their chance to turn around the momentum a little bit because, you know, it's a three versus four. Early yeah. on, Marky comes out, he pops off with a bit of a star moment, but after that, in the post plant, not really able to get into that in time, right? The Molotov, while the plant is going on, Junior not realizing we can spread to the fast rotation from Furia does mean that they're very much ready. I mean, in terms of straight-up gunfights, the only one that's been able to win them so far has been Marky, which is 
you know, kind of staggering to think about. George got his kill when Fallen missed his AWP shot and mm. he was just boxed in. That's, you know, that hardly feels like a fair fight when Fallen's caught between bolting the AWP back. I mean, if this is the tone that Fury want to set in their opening round, a team with a little bit of doubt around them, even though they come in as one of the firm favorites. When we think about South American top-level teams, Furia is right there and has been for at least, uh, I mean, this will be a third year running where we consider them that. Might even be the fourth. Yeah, breakthrough in Katowice 2019 mm. to the major main stage. Didn't place too highly at the time, but they've made roster moves to bring in more experience. So expectations are, will still be set quite high. Good damage dealt out by Art. Of course, the utility damage back out to Banana was still there, but the thing is, now it doesn't feel like they're getting any control. Furia needs to be forced off. They're not going to concede for free. And that's exactly what Nouns has in mind now. Cello will have the cover of a Molotov, the one that Carson cannot go through. Carson won't even be given a chance, though. It will be just the flame to take him out. Art continues to fight, but not completely committing. Waiting for George to push forward. I don't think he realized how close George was. Might have expected him to back off. But even so, rotations have come through. Reinforcements are here in the form of Fallen. And Art doesn't need reinforcements. Good for another frag made to the feet of CJ. And Fallen just closing the distance. The AWP isn't the weapon you want over here. But if he just hit that shot through the smoke, timing would have been favored for them. One more smoke that's left and immediately deployed back towards CT. They need to find some ground. If they just sit in the back of the bomb site, this is going to be primed up for a good nade from Quesarado to do some serious damage. The big thing will be the timing here for Yuri. He slowed things down dramatically over towards Banana, and his teammates are taking fights and trying to keep them locked in. Junior, a lovely shot into Fallen. But Quesarado actually trailing and wanting to go in for that trade, it's just not going to be allowed. Fury are instead moving to contain them. Nouns have to stay within this bomb site. Fury have conceded the round. Finally, Nouns break through with a bomb plant. They'll break through with a round as well. But there should be and there will be no survivors from the North Americans. God, Junior just got his hands on an uh, AWP as well right there. That's where you just feel so bad for him and the rest of the team. But now the other problem is obviously because you've gotten so few kills earlier on, it feels like there's zero impact to Furia losing four players as well. Yeah. I mean, their money was built. So a very fiscally responsible approach to that retake. Took a lot of resources out of Nouns just to get that one round registered to their name. And now they come in with a bit more of a crippled buy. You know, we don't have AKs across the board. It's Galil's instead here for Nouns. And so that one shot headshot isn't as much of a factor. Carson accelerates. Good for one, but can't make it two. Cello zero on the trade. He doesn't feel afraid of the flames. Marky as well. Definitely the main man for Nouns, not just now. Feels like he has been for about six months or so, but Fallen is here to watch out for him. Another missed shot, but Yuri's done the same. Yuri catches him on the fade back in, and he's, his position is known, but he just keeps on fragging. Nothing you can do about it. Yuri, coming up massive. What have they done to Yuri? Who is this man? So fearless on all of these fights. This man's a multi-kill machine right now for Furia. 15 and 1. 15 and 1, and now he goes to 16 when he's got 8 HP left, just swings out wide, takes CJ down. Seven rounds of play, and he's already flying through this Nouns attack. Man wants to break some records right now. I mean, it's... I, I don't even really blame Nouns for wanting to try and lock him in. <laughs> you know, they, they have him completely contained within the boiler. They would have heard his retreat if he was going to run through those apartments. But Yuri just stood and fought, and... They even got the dink on him in the first peek in through Boiler, right? Like, yeah. you feel like they did nothing wrong there. He's got to shoot faster than he does. Fallen, another missed shot, but there's a nade over here to help him escape. And now when it's close range, he can finally frag in. Cello giving assistance, which was desperately needed. But the round is over practically as it begins. Seven to one. Did we forget our glasses on nouns? Might be in the logo, but I feel like sometimes uh, the, pe the people that are running around with 2020 vision right now, Furia. 
Sometimes you just want to close your eyes to what's going on, Michael. You know what? This it might be time for Nouns to find a coping mechanism at this stage, because uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be going anywhere. And especially considering for George and Junior, this is such a big deal for them, right? To be back at the RMRs after being sort of caged in EG Black for as long as they were. This was supposed to be their big debut. Like, yeah, we're going up against this this crouching tiger that's kind of wounded. Maybe we can do it. Tea time's tweeting about us. <laughs> they definitely thought that, Michael. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they did. <laughs> Way to toot your own horn. I mean, it's a pretty bad horn if I'm saying now it's going to win and now you're seeing Yuri come out and be the best he's ever been. But this Swiss system can be so brutal. You know, getting upset mm. and one of those favorites suddenly cannot make a mistake. Two losses and you're out of here. And to be honest, I really love the Fury that we're seeing right now, not just because, oh, obviously there's fireworks going on, but because it doesn't feel like I've seen anything from them beyond individual prowess in a way that shows how comfortable they are in Inferno. For context, guys, in case you don't know, they've played Inferno twice in yeah. the past three months against Apex trading wins one, uh, one each, right? So this isn't a team whose map pool hasn't been questioned quite a few times, right? We didn't know what we're going to see on Inferno. And now everyone else throughout the rest of the BO3 stages who might be thinking, well, you know, maybe we can punish them on Inferno. Think again. Yeah, this Furia roster, it does feel like that instability of, of roles has unfortunately had a, an impact on their performances. Even if we're talking about Keserado and Yuri as a duo within this team, a lot of people think probably, I mean, you've, you've, pro you've had so many years of high output from both these guys that at mm. some point it's going to taper off. And, you know, Keserado is still making it within the top 20 last year. He's still a player that you can rely on, but it's it's not as though, you know, when we think about the numbers he's outputting and the team's actual performance and sort of making it deep into the top tier tournaments, it's actually honestly quite surprising how much he's been able to keep that form up. Especially considering that this isn't like a Nico-esque player who's going, you know, for those solo aggressive plays in the middle of the map very often. This is a guy who will be more available towards you in maybe the middle of the round, maybe later on in the round. Plays so, definitely more within a system than yeah. some of the other stars when we think like breakthrough players. Mm. And it's harder to get those multi-frags in those situations if your teammates haven't already weakened them up a little bit, right? They haven't given you that info, maybe. Maybe they haven't gotten that damage and it feels more difficult. And... You're right, the fact that he continues to deliver the way he has, it does feel like it's an inevitability that you're going to stop peaking at some point, right? The mountaintop doesn't continue forever, theoretically. Yeah, but I do love that Furia came into this game with such an aggressively, yeah. Yeah, aggressive de defense on this uh, Inferno CT start, because it just sets the tone so nicely. I mean... When we think about some of the rounds that Nouns have played out when they've had rifles, it feels like they're reacting to how things went in previous rounds. When Fury are just, you know, they started aggressive, but they've actually kind of peeled themselves back a little bit as well. And I, I just love that you have that dynamic where, you know, even if you're thinking about Art as an in-game leader, so, so aggressive himself, but if you're really going to lean on experience, I feel like Fallen is, is kind of the perfect guy to be able to say, listen, I'm fine for you to do some, that sometimes, but I'm gonna, I maybe be the one that dictates when and where that will happen, you know? And it does feel like, though, even in that aggression, Fury in the middle of it all didn't feel like they maintained that identity the same way, right? Because they did have to discard some of it to continue playing on the elite level where they did, but maybe this is sort of their solution, right? Go back to where it all sort of started, let Yuri be a little bit more aggressive early on on the CT sides, let him take these chances, let Fallen play off of him in that regards. Hell, even if you need to bait Fallen by getting Fallen into this weird aggressive angle that Henny used to play once upon a time mm -hmm. in Furia, Maybe that is the system, right? It never felt like Furia recovered that same top level, top three team in the world form ever since Henny departed. Yeah, not there aren't many operas that exist in the world that play quite like Henny does, really. How, I mean, it, maybe I, like Brokey, that's all. Yeah, even then, you wouldn't really see him as like a pry hmm. bar element, you know? It's, it's strange to think that Henny carved out an opening style that was so aggressive and like <laughs> space taker like almost like an entry fragger on an awp yeah that i mean yeah he's very hard to replace and it, it felt like it worked so well with furia on their rise towards the end of 2019 mm. moving into 
the, the 2020 online uh, segments. It felt like that was when Fury had the most identity around them because they were just characterized being so aggro. I mean, dude, I even remember back in 2018, you know, at the ECS finals and whatnot, where they made their big breakthroughs with, you know, three, four events in a row where everyone's really praising them. Then they get into these five year long contracts and everything, right? That's when it did feel like, yeah, this team has an identity. And then that identity eventually just became, hey, we're the elite South American team. Mm -hmm. And when that went away, you realize that a lot of that unique style of play either wasn't working anymore or wasn't there anymore. And it, it's good to see some of that coming back in in this regard, you know, on Inferno especially, especially when I think about it, Fallen's had a bad history with Inferno, right? You think back to that one, God, I, believe, I, I might be getting this one wrong, but I think it was 2017, one of the EPL finals up against North where, you know, you had the infamous push down banana and then they choked against G2. That was where Kenny has got, I think, maybe even his last land win and whatnot, right? So this was, this was a different time. And ever since then, it felt like Fallen's teams on Inferno weren't really doing that well. And listen, this isn't really Fallen's team, even if he is a major figure in it. It is still Art and Gary's baby, mm -hmm. but it's kind of cool to see... You know, and it is premature, right? It's just one bo one, but it's kind of cool to see them being this comfortable on a map like that with that much sort of blood in the water. And of course, these two teams are going to have a, a, a weird amount of uh, sort of crossover in terms of player experience and chemistry. You know, at one point, you know, we talked about Junior on this on this roster for nouns. He was on Furia for what? a period of time. You know, that's the void that, that Henny left behind. They were like, Junior, hyper aggressive, doing so well in North America. We can make this work. Yeah. Our English our English is good enough. You, mm. you know, you see these guys in interviews. The the Furia. Wasn't he trying to speak Portuguese in that? There team? was also <laughs> an attempt made, I believe. But you can you could take the North America uh, North American out of North America, but some uh, transplanting him into something, South America is South quite America. <laughs> yeah something something South America it's, it's it is very difficult to implement you know the, it is the languages aren't really even that closely linked especially when you consider you know the criticisms of Junior as an opera because it's always fun to compare Junior and OC because those two did feel like they came up together they yeah. had the same numbers domestically but one of them succeeded where the other could the styles were just so different yeah and that's where all of that criticism about Junior's ability to play internationally. Remember, guys, if you are coming in and watching Junior after a long time, he hasn't been able to compete internationally, right? Beyond the last six months with the EG project, when there was so much scrutiny on the team, when they were so, in such a bad position just because of the PR situation, because what was happening over in other games, maybe. And I don't, I don't, I'm not going to judge a player pure, too harshly in such a difficult time period. So what I'm just curious about is. In Junior's return to this international stage, which Junior are we going to see? Is it the repeat heavy Junior who gets flashed off and dies? Is it a guy who can reposition more effectively? Is it someone who still repeaks but then just hits those shots, right? This is the curiosity that you should be having as you look over towards this Nouns project and you consider what Junior brings to the table. Yeah, it's like, it's what I was saying earlier. I do think his playbook has expanded, but, you know, I think some of those. Uh, critiques were more levied at his decision making. You know, it's not like he couldn't make these plays. It was when and where to pull that off or when to take that that extra risk. And Michael, you know what? I have the perfect analogy for George, right? And I spent quite a while thinking about this. Okay. Because I always felt like Nouns, American team, you know, they felt a bit like fast food to me. You go in, you pick up a burger, it's all right, it's okay, right? It's decent, you've got some aggressive elements into it, the meats are kicking in immediately, It'll you fill you up. over there. It's okay, it's kind of fun to have, but it doesn't feel quite gourmet. And George's addition feels like that umami that's been missing from this team consistently. Because now what you have is an aggressive Marky who's got someone there to back him up. So Marky doesn't need to worry about, oh my God, if I don't get like a double kill entry, this round's going to be really difficult on the T side. Because George very often has got really nice interplay with him. Now, he's not playing with him on every single map default. But what Nouns is very good at, and I do think I credit Adren a lot for this, even though unlike Dust, I don't have them deep pockets in the North America and see so mm -hmm. I can't just ring him up and be like hey yo Adren what's good what's the veto gonna be just do your own ho own homework damn it <laughs> but you know this is where I do feel like Adren's added a lot of this 
set piece vari variants into the T sides. And that's where George and Marky, whenever they're together, it feels like that umami flavor kicks in because that just adds a little bit more richness, a little bit more follow up. When Marky comes in, he gets a kill or two. Even if he dies, George has got enough information that he can individually sort of pick from the battles that he wants. It feels like he's the kind of player who can differentiate duels very appropriately. And even though he's a little bit aggressive as well, he's very good at being a baiting aggressive player. And I know that word's got a negative connotation, but he's really, really good at it. I mean, give Adrian as much credit as you want, but is he going around giving good massages? During these time, <laughs> technical timeouts, we're, we're looking at Gary walking around, making sure those players are comfortable, feeling relaxed. I wonder if you just get sent to school or is that, you know, the first week of coaching school is, you know what? We're going to sign up, you sign you up to physical therapy, yeah. like coaching sessions. And if you don't need to learn English because you're not going into an international team as a second language speaker, might as well learn how to massage. There you yeah. go. I actually know nothing about Counter-Strike. Instead, mm. it's I'm a professional masseuse. See, now you, now you just sound like Torrin when he was describing it right back in the 2016 low quit. <laughs> That's not true, by the way, guys. No. This is not true. He, was, he did always say that he was uh, quite a mind for the game. Maybe no, I he mean, didn't have the hands anymore. Yeah, Adrian always had that. Yes. You know, I, I think the, the, <laughs> the unfortunate thing is, you know, sometimes we uh, attribute nicknames. The community does at least. They attach <laughs> nicknames to people. And sometimes they stick. You know? Sometimes they're really mean, but so funny. <laughs> yeah. You know, think about the... The 4750 decoy, yeah. And uh, like the the 15% window or whatever it is. The Draken one? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The 15 degree yeah. angle, yeah. Yeah, our 20 <laughs> degree window and... Uh, you know what? I, I do feel like the CS community is so... Uh, it's really missing out on Chinese presence because you think about like a lot of these esports which have a lot of Eastern presence, those guys are really good with coming up with mean nicknames. Well, we have some Chinese presence at the Major. It's true, Lin Vision making yeah. it forward. And that'll be a fun time. Back at the Major since 2021, I think it's the first time we've had a Chinese team again. And good to see that, you know, they're that fresh in. Also just a brand new team. So. Yeah. None of those legacy players. So look, there's going to be a lot of conversation about whether it's a bear or a mountain lion in that logo. Well, I do think Fury are probably annoyed that the Mongols made it. Oh my God! I mean, it's, that, that... it's actually kind of interesting to think about like South America as like the top level teams, and weirdly Mongolia or or North Asia seeming to have a bit of a rivalry building at these top level of. I have never been more of a fan of Brazilian Counter Strike ever since they've been validating Asian CS by losing <laughs> to them. It's like, oh yes, Fury is so good, guys. They're amazing, and that's why it's even more important than Mongols beat them three times. <laughs> they beat Cloud Nine as well, didn't they? Yeah, so... I mean, yeah. That's true. But it was, uh, I, I will say though, MIBR is the only team that seems to consistently get one over the Mongols. And maybe that's, a, maybe that's more of a significance to about how well coached that, that system seems to be, right? Bit's done so well in bringing up those five players together. And obviously he's got a lot of talent to work with as well. But some of that talent seemed like it was practically donated to them by FURIA, right? FURIA letting go of drop, letting go of safe, not really working out with them in their opinion. There's a lot of criticism levied towards them for those drops, especially dropping drop. I think as well, you know, when we, uh, at the time when Fallen came into this roster, it almost felt like losing to the Asian teams was a kind of a breaking point. Mm -hmm. You know, both Furia and Cloud9 were in similar positions where the in-game leaders were being criticized for maybe not having the the, the most growth in terms of their, the rosters and the talent that they had surrounding them. You know, you think about Kei Serato, Yuri, uh, as these, uh, fanta this fantastic rifling duo. But then you also, by comparison, on Cloud9 had, what, Axile, you had Hobbit, mm. Shiro, you had these star-level players, and you just, you're getting defeated by regions that have, effectively, I mean, less resources, less history. You know, that, that felt like the, the final pushing point for, for Furia to, to look around for, for an in-game leader. And that's the kind of weight that Fallen had on his shoulders. I do, I do think and do hope that Fallen has helped grow this team on a mentalities basis as well, yeah. because sometimes it felt like Furia, if they had these poor run-ins or these poor starts, they could end up almost in a, a weird, vicious loop where the, you didn't actually see them recover in games. Yeah. But that's that experience that, that Fallen has, you know, that infamous a uh, taco anecdote about proving <laughs> just how good you are. Yeah. And while it might be a good speech, it doesn't always work. I do miss I do miss 
hearing more from the Brazilian scene, though, in general. And it feels like ever since we've gone back to the segregation of the Americas regions, it feels like we don't get that anymore. And of course, to those of you guys who might be wondering what I'm talking about, uh, pre-pandemic especially, most of the South American teams, or at least most of the top teams, were actually living in North America to be able to scrim the North American teams more effectively. But as we've had you know, time go on, all of them have ended up moving back to you know, South America, back to Brazil. Some of them have you know, set up facilities in Europe as well. So it feels like you don't have that same media presence, especially you don't have the same insight uh, coming in from some of these teams. And that's where you know, it does feel like a shame because... Taco, Fallen, uh, Phelps, these guys have been such characters and they've added so much character to that scene. And that does feel like one of the things that we still do miss from the Asian scene. Even if we draw so many parallels, we don't have any icons like they've been. You know, we don't have anyone who can lift up the scene into international interest like they did beyond just pure competitiveness. I think as well, you know, winning majors certainly does that a helps. lot for a sort of <laughs> additionally validating that whole scene. You know, yeah. we, we think you know, what, the Tarek leaving North America, mm. Stewie leaving North America and joining Brazilian rosters. Yeah. You know, that, that was a very curious time in, in Counter-Strike, but it also kind of was a, a signal of the times that mm. they were more willing to bridge that gap and I think that that was where we sort of realized how crazy some of the buyout situation must be getting, right? Because if you're willing to buy out Stewie 2K and Tarek from Cloud9, the major winning Cloud9, yeah. but you can't buy out, you know, players like at the time Serato and Yuri, that's where, you know, things are, you know, going in an interesting direction. Yeah, I do think it is uh, maybe an unhealthy parallel because, you know, you are buying up players that have a proven track record. And so, you know, your pockets can be loosened uh, yeah, when you've got yeah, more achievements behind true. you. But that is definitely one of the things that we've noticed that these Brazilian teams especially have gone for an interesting method of roster building to them. But I think we can focus more on the general management and maybe a, a, a little bit more towards uh, the general management of these games. Instead, we're back into it. We apologize for the technical delay. Hopefully, we've been able to ramble long enough and give you guys some nice breakfast waffling. Yeah, uh, seven to one start for Furia. Quite a harrowing scoreline, but it's the other way around. Furia with a very, very dominant force and start to this map. Of course, their first round of the Americas RMR. And they have made Nouns look a little silly. They haven't been able to frag this Furia team since they've been on the defense. You know, you think about the ADR and the opening kills. Are Yuri? Are you kidding me? Yeah, this guy has been <laughs> everywhere. Eight rounds and 16 kills to his tally. I think the solution might just be kill Yuri, maybe <laughs> win. There's a lot of question marks in the middle as to how you get to that part, but... Oh, once again, banana controls what they're attempting. This did give them some benefit before as well, but Art's got the AWP doubling up between Art and Fallen, taking advantage of that juicy economy they've built up on the back of Yuri. One of the first few times that Nouns have been able to acquire early banana control without having a player burned up by Molotovs or Utility. Ooh, interesting. Very early Molotov coming out. Art's feeling quite worried about this. And if you look over towards the A-side setup, they've got zero presence down middle, so they don't actually have much information. I'm wondering if they want to go for a play in that mid-round or they're just feeling comfortable enough to rely on themselves over here. I mean, it felt like every time, every round we saw from Fury after the opening aggression that they had, they started to peel further and further back. And so this is about as extreme as it gets. Like you said, they are flying with very limited information and Nouns are hoping to reset and put more pressure back onto the A side. Fallen's played this angle before. He has to be careful to not just get pre-fired down. In the meanwhile, though, actually ends up hitting the shot this time over and will be assisting with a nade down short. Yuri is going to keep himself alive behind that smoke, but what's the plan coming out from Carson? He wants to close the distance, but he's gone to the flames. Kay Serato not even needing to lift a finger to take him down. And already Nouns have lost two players before they can even think about breaching the bomb site. This crossfire is looking impossible to get past. Fallen's covering off long, Yuri takes first contact, George is low, and now this is where Kesarato needs to get involved, but even there, Fallen keeps it going, very nice stuff from him. The unwavering hand of Brazil, finally uh, Fallen actually able to have one of these rounds where he can get on the board in a multi-frag fashion. 
you know, got the opening inside of the apartments, and you saw just as soon as they, they found those initial kills, now slowing down on short and realizing that they didn't actually have a second prong to this assault. Fallen just able to maintain that presence, and he had to reset someone into the apartments to try and deal with Fallen in some oh. capacity. But you can't stop this man from having his impact. A uh, lovely set of shots there from the godfather of Brazil. Fallen right now. Oh, keeps it going. I've had enough of the godfather of Brazil, Michael. I'd like a little bit of librarian madness as well. The most classic version of Fallen to me. And of course, he started off missing a few of these yeah. shots, right? He started off a little bit slow. You know, sometimes long technical timeouts can actually work against you in terms of building momentum, but it's allowed Fallen to Ooh. reset. The orb will not see much work here from Art. Instead, floored by Junior, and there is an orb that he can recover should they breach B. That's a pretty big should. Shadow's got the smoke molly combo off immediately. Now remember, Fallen's not got much util, so if he's the first man to rotate over to this B bomb site, this could be tricky. But Nouns is expecting him to have rotated. They're wrong. He's still here. He's still peeking. He's still killing. Furia are remaining stalwart in their defenses, holding down the line as they know their individuals will perform. Quesarado, a little bit of a sloppier spray, but that's where Fallen's been given space. Comes in through that smoke and now being flanked by Junior, but expects it. You know what he's doing? He's staying inside the smoke. Junior is lost. He has no idea where this op is. All he knows is that there's 20 seconds, the bomb is on the ground, and he needs to get a kill, and fast. Back to back multi-frags from Fallen. You had one problem to deal with before that long tech, and now you've got a whole other issue, a whole can of worms to unpack. Fallen is now just hitting shot after shot. I don't think he's missed <laughs> since we've had our eyes on him yep. now in these past couple rounds. God, that must be annoying. Mm. First you had to deal with Yuri, now you've killed him twice and it turns out there's another big man behind him. And you know what, you've dealt with him twice, there's still a few more times left. Yuri getting aggressive down middles, finding so much space. It's a bit of a change up as well. Last time we saw him try and play it pretty passively in towards the mid bracket side, but to be this close, he is found out. Marky, good kill to get, but is he ready for the second? Will it matter? Art is able to adjust. CJ had the advantage, but can't make use of it. And this is where Art is still playing with these smokes. The Brazilians cannot be defeated when they are given cover like they are. I mean, still a three on three, but they've got so much presence. Case Serrano, that's a big fight to have lost out on. George able to adjust his spray in time. That was the bomb. A very isolated fight, but Carson just can't link back up with this play over towards a cello trap behind that smoke. But now they'll have a second prong to retake with, but cello goes spamming and they spam right back. Man advantage here for Nouns and a clutch for Art to try and pull through. Art's got a Molotov. He can force Marky out of position over here and then Push him forward. Now, Marcus Smoke could counter that one out, so you shouldn't be too worried about it. But the problem is, George is low. He's taking first contact. I love that. Nouns bring their second round together. And they finally breach through, even with a Furia getting so aggressive and so making things so uncomfortable there for Nouns in the mid round. Able to get that adjustment. And I think it is George that does pretty much all the heavy lifting that critical kill onto Boiler. They breach into the bomb site. And then, like you said, love the idea of him swinging first, especially when Marky's position was given up. This is the last round of the half. A third would go a long way to inspire a little bit more confidence here for Nouns. We'll put a little bit less weight on that pistol, but it feels like those are all necessities anyway for Nouns if they want to try and get back in this game. I cannot believe how consistently aggressive Fury is going down the middle. With different players as well. Seen Art, Yuri, and Fallen do it. Maybe a gap in the default that Fury are choosing to exploit, because no one on Nouns has been there to punish. Fallen smoked off, goes past, wow. and he just doesn't care. He knows Yuri is here. Right, so he's unfazed about the fall. 
possibility of missing, and this time he doesn't miss, even able to get away to safety. Yuri gives him that cover fire. And a Molotov down at bracket means that Fallen and Yuri can both retreat. There's four players on this site, and nouns are still committed without knowing what lies in wait. Rotation will at least blur the numbers together a little bit more, but Cello is still holding it down, and he's not going to expose himself to Carson. Time is running low. There's only 30 seconds left. And now simply cannot breach. They're running out of numbers. They've got two Molotovs and they need to be perfectly placed. Kesarado, no smokes present, but he can just play mini pit instead. He's so comfortable with this crossfire that's being built up. Yuri's still alive as well. Cello good for the first graded out, but that's where Kesarado excels. Yuri's still alive. They need to know this. They have to know this. But Junior reveals his position and reveals his ignorance as well. 10 to 2, Furia looking unstoppable. Yeah, I mean, what a commanding CT side. They played dynamically, they played aggressively, and it felt like they found massive gaps in that T side default. Constant exploitation and just creating and building these crossfires so quickly when it actually came to breaking into the bomb sites, especially when they went A, it felt like Nouns could barely get an inch, and if they did, it came at heavy costs. What a well-called, well-oiled machine Furia come out the gates with in their opening round. If there was ever going to be a world in which Furia somehow, for who knows what reasons, didn't make it out of this America's RMR, starting off with a loss, are starting off a little shaky. Those were the symptoms that we were maybe looking for to indicate whether or not that would be the case, but they just were playing so damn well. I'm so glad to see Fallen in action, though. It didn't feel like, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't think I was going to see this version of Fallen. Yeah. I mean, you saw the types of decisions he was making. Yeah. He's going through smokes. He's like, actually, this is what old me would do. Does challenge, does channel 2017. Tight jeans is still in fashion. Well, according to some, they are still in fashion now, but. Well, Nouns has been struggling to walk. Maybe they're wearing some tight jeans. They need to walk forward though in this pistol round. Steal something away. The plan is simple for Furia. Two Molotovs to the back of the bomb site, full execute out to B, and Carson has to interrupt and disrupt, but no, he's just been taken down through the smoke. George is going to be oh. able to frag out quickly with the double dually double kill. I mean, that's exactly what you want out of George. You lose your first player through the smoke, and he, before Furia can even get past the, the opening of B, just getting their heads ripped clean. And I do really like the setup that they still have maintained on the A site. Now listen, Yuri does have a smoke. If he wants to rotate back, this could be a full A hit, but Art is alone and they know it. They've only heard a single pair of footsteps and an easy clean shot will deal with him. Now it's a two on two on the B site. Smoke has been deployed. George at the back of the bomb site is waiting for the bomb pot to come in, but no, he takes contact first. He's setting up for a push through the smoke from Junior. CJ is giving them footsteps so that they don't think that there's a second player inside that very smoke. They're being so worried and contact is made. Junior and George finish it off. Mr. Umami coming in with a triple. Yeah. I mean, a really solid set of kills there from George, just tapping away with the duelies, which is not how you'd attribute it usually. You know, there are some players that when you look at them on this weapon, they sometimes just wish they had a USP, especially when they're going for these sort of mid to long range duels, but very efficient pistol work from these double pistols. It's very rare you get a clip like that from the duelies. Normally it's more of a da 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 and yes, I do think of all my clips as sound yeah, I mean, I mean, opening, you know, towards the mouth of Banana, for example, with the yeah. duelies, or, you know, close hut on Nuke. Just a flurry of players coming your way, so you gotta make sure to lay down some suppressing fire. It's a start that Nouns needed. And with Furia's purchase, it does feel like four is inevitable. I don't know about you, but I love that the Zeus is in fashion. Do, do, you know the thing that I was thinking of though is it I've never seen the change of it being rechargeable be significant. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it, I just feel like this is another Aug and Greek situation where it was always viable, but these pros, these damn pros, 
They just don't want to use it. Sometimes they need a little bit of encouragement. Yeah, just nudge them along. But I was like, guys, come on, 30 seconds. You know, you, you'll you use it twice. Yeah, for sure. You now move five, uh, five units <laughs> faster with the Zeus. Maybe that's what the change we need with the Negev, and we'll see it see play. That's like one of those MOBA changes where it's like, oh, yes, uh, we have added one mana to this hero. Wait, they buffed this hero? Oh, my God. <laughs> Based Ice Frog. Clown should be able to pick up a fair bit of money, though. They've got three MP9s, and that money will be important. But you also have to be worried about... Actually, there are four MP9s. I'm bad at counting. Hmm. This is a little bit risky, though, when you consider you are setting yourself up for a bonus round where you've got a lot of SMGs. So not quite sure if I approve of this purchase. But the good thing is they have zero casualties. They don't need to repurchase armor. So if they want to just upgrade this outright, Junior's got enough for an op. CJ can buy an M4 comfortably. Oh, I mean, Fury are already up to double digits as well. So should you lose a round, you'll be on one stage loss bonus. Yeah. You, know, you kind of have to treat every round like it will be your last here if you're nouns. Yeah, bonus rounds kind of suck in that situation. Yeah. MR12 can be Ooh, quite a cruel there's mistress. Maintain four MP9s. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, th this is the way that they are able to sort of leverage being able to have some extra cash in their pockets. But yeah, they need to farm up at least some of these kills on those SMGs to make it worth it. I mean, it does feel like you have to win the round regardless. Yeah. I just with the scoreline being what it is. So maybe some aggression, maybe some mid-round retaking in banana, something like it. The deep smoke's always frustrating to deal with because you never know when you're just going to be spammed down and seen. That's why CJ is forced to retreat. I mean, at least with this path as well, should they lose this round, Junior can get his hands on an AWP to try and keep Furia at the gates. Can't be thinking about losses of this round just yet, though. They shouldn't. I can. Yeah, I mean, don't be, don't be mean. Mm. Or you mean, not you mean. But you mean to say that CJ is going to be waiting inside the smoke and library expecting a push through. But the smoke's dissipated. At the same time, Junior is still aggressive on short shadow spotted art gone. Keserado right behind him will trade. And what a flash it was, but it will not matter. CJ not peeking up fast enough, fallen given the chance to recover, and Marky can't do the same. A three on two now as nouns are going to be forced to stay back and potentially forever hold their peace. Yeah, I mean, they get caught. Even though they had that flash play lined up, they knew that Long was exposed and that the rap from Furia was very likely. The fact that Flon gets that kill while blinded up actually makes a world of a difference. He was that first point of contact on Furia's play to A. And it seems as though nouns have already cut their losses moving instead for exit kills on Furia as they finally attain their first round moving into this T side. Nouns may have won the pistol, the follow-up. But here on their bonus against the rifles, they will concede. And Furia have broken through. That was always going to be one of the shortfalls of having so many of those SMGs is that when you have to deal with multiple frags, it can be very difficult to be efficient with your bullets enough. It also feels like if you do have so many SMGs, if you aren't saving your utility, you have to go aggro. And yep, there you can see Fallen's basically, that flashbang is effectively faded by that point. CJ just unfortunately can't get the kill in time. This feels like the last stand here for Nouns on Inferno. A full commitment, their coffers will have run thin, and should Furia win here, they're already knocking at the door of closing out this Inferno with, em with emphatic fashion. I mean, yeah. they played such a solid CT side. Not much you could really fault in their setups or the way they played. Oh but my god! What is... <laughs> he doesn't have a head anymore! That's one hell of a lineup there from Art, but he is punished for trying to move past those smokes. CJ had the elevated angle on short side. But here's that rap that's exposed. Cello heard the steps over towards Long, so he knows that CJ was nearby, and I think CJ may have just spotted Cello. 
Compromising the spawn position. Carson has to be very worried, but George locking things down over towards Banana. They try running through this smoke down at the bottom of B, and George has feasted upon their remains. Furia get outdone by George on B. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they might have just jumped too early thinking they're about to cross the smoke because it felt like George had every single advantage and Furio was getting ready to double swing out with a quick jump forward, but then they're just still in the smoke. Yeah, and that's, this is one of those things where, you know, if you wait three seconds there if you're Furio by uh, simply seeing that smoke of the, the mouth of Banana, George basically has a much harder time getting mm. any of these kills. That is a hell of a Dude, shot that's from Art. Insane, that's honestly. Ridiculous that he lined it up so perfect. Yeah, look at this. Like, I actually think that because of the way the CS2 smokes are slightly different, where it will be deeper if it's, uh, you know, sort of compressed together, they might have just gotten lost inside it, and George takes full advantage of that with a great triple kill round. Now listen, the AWP is still here, and we need to see some impact from it. It's a big investment. And it's not being used the same way as Fallen was, where you've got rifles to trade it out, cello, moves past but the nade will be giving away his position there's two more behind him so that molotov is actually getting quite a bit of value marky getting ready but forced to fall back cj second molly needs to be deployed very soon does go forward will be interrupting yuri's pathway into the site as well meanwhile marky is good for just repositioning himself staying inside pit cj not yet peeking forward. A flash from Junior would be a big help over here. Art still unsure about how to go about this round. Wants to get aggressive, wants to find a frag, but no one's giving him the opportunity. Going into the smoke, threatening a push forward, but CJ has completely routed him out. Still traded out is Fallen though. Rather, a buy Fallen. And Marky, alive and bait, drops the bomb. Time's now suddenly ticking down a little bit further. Two versus four, Kesarara and Yuri, generally the players you want to see, but Marky is not giving them anything to work with. A nade to the smoke as well. Kesarara disrupted. Marky is playing this perfectly, and George is now here to assist. 1v4. Kesarara needs to suss out the Mexican in pit. Marky found out, taken down. But that's given space to Carson to come into play from apartments and finish off that round very comfortable from nouns when you see Marky and how swiftly he makes these decisions I, from pit. I mean, with how quickly all those rounds felt like they were played out on the CT side for Furia, this felt like they, they weren't really sure how they wanted to approach things. And I, and I felt like, as well, Art actually had a player dead to rights within the bomb site. CJ threw a flash for that long side peek from the, the double stack, but Art made no reaction. He didn't seem to know where that flash had come from, or even if that a flash had been thrown from that spot. So it felt like maybe there was a, a little bit of indecision, a lot going on in the comms. They weren't sure how they wanted to finish that round, Ooh. but they know how do they want to start this one. They're starting it by taking some nades to the faces, but regardless of the flashes, Jello is actually the one to get the frag, nade to trade it out, and look at how weak Furia is. This could be another big moment for George should they choose to push forward, but in the meanwhile, Marky is playing some of that Yuri game. If Marky falls for whatever reason, Nouns are simply in the wrong spot to do much about anything. Marky's job is to contain them, stop them from being able to wrap back in towards an A play, because Nouns have three set up on B. That's feel like the B bomb site push just looks impossible at this stage. So much utility still left as well. Junior's got a smoke. Won't be deploying it. First skill goes outwards. George, still alive. Molotov finishes off a new box as well. And CJ, right through the smoke, can have some easy pickings. These players are still incredibly low, very weak. And there's no reason for George to peek. He knows it. Junior coming forward. And Noun's looking quite good in dealing with the anti eco. Marquis' flank now finally activated. And I have to say, it's a nice little recovery of form at the very least. Yeah, I mean, really disciplined approach there from Nouns. You know, didn't feel like any of them overstepped. They understood exactly what their contingency plan was. I mean, Marky knew his job. They kept utility available as well as time was starting to bleed out. So Fury basically couldn't get a look in. And I thought they might have called the timeout the, the round prior, but this is a, a nice way to set themselves up on a rifle buy, make sure that everyone's head is in the right place, and that they actually have a clear plan thought through for the opening segment as well as critically the ending portion as well because what's good is all the space if you aren't able to capitalize on it now it's doing their best to recover 
themselves, compose themselves for the second half. And we've seen some good crossfires. I think this, this Nouns team do feel pretty well drilled on CT, even if they are playing a pretty stagnant style thus mm. far on CT. You know, we compare that to Fury that we're just challenging down mid continuously. Sometimes different strokes can work for different folks. Junior yet to be given a chance to actually put that up to use in the mid duel. No one is taking it with him. I don't blame them or them for that matter. If you can just pre fire it out, why take the mid duel? He yeah, probably won't play that corner ever again. You know, traumatized. You say that? It's I mean, not the same corner. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah, you're right, actually. Watch Art have just two different lines. <laughs> yeah, well. Like, you were in my team, I'm in your head. <laughs> If it happens twice, I mean, you just shrug your shoulders and say, what can you do? 4A, here for nouns. CJ is once again boosted. Oh, the peak is not going to come with the flashbang. Like he's relying on the flame pillar. Good only for one though, and in the meanwhile, Junior, good for another. He doesn't realize there's been a crossover to Coffin. If the CTs are planning on retaking this, they're about to be given a rude awakening, but in fact, Case Serrano's pushed all the way forward. I don't know if he realizes how sneaky he was. Yeah, the good news is that because that smoke's been down for so long, it should be something that is accounted for here for now. It's a three on three, and they have a belt of utility available for this retake. No Molotovs, though. Case Serrano taking first duel inside a construction and Fallen right there to try and plug up that gap. But the fact that they're down that extra man, Fallen doesn't want to leave. Cello in a compromised position. He's spotted. They know that they've got Fallen locked in and Marky will be his undoing. A one on three here for Cello and he's fighting out in the open. He wants this face, but the smoke that will meet and greet him in the face. Cello, a lovely spray transfer for a second, but Nouns have it. They'll succeed on the retake and they'll keep this run going. And all of that retake just comes down to Kesarado completely fumbling the shots, unfortunately, on Marky. And now you're up to eight for Nouns. Fury have the money to go for a buy, but even this isn't going to be perfect. This is entering very concerning territory, to be perfectly frank, and even more so when you consider, you know, the main man for Fury, who we were complimenting so much, has gone from 16 and 1 to 19 and 11, right? Your, your safety net of Fury is gone. What's plan B? Especially when you think about uh, Fury with how much experience they have to think that some of their problems right now on this T side are actually getting into the, the bomb sites and holding things down in the post plan. Fury were so free-flowing, so carefree on CT. Now problems have arisen. Came into this half 10 to 2 up. And like you said, Nouns are right behind them now. Three to separate the two squads. CJ has really been loving this boosted spot. and will remain unchallenged for a little while longer. And of course, Furia needs to be very worried about someone once again pushing down mid aggressively as Carson did in the previous. Just that threat in their minds is going to be something to consider. Still, doesn't feel like they're really getting much map control. Sure, they have banana, but even that comes with a lot of utility being used, and if you want to go into the B-bomb site, you don't have the double Molotov, only got one. And that's been used. Actually, sorry, they did have a double Molotov. Fallen's got one as well. But even so, executing here won't be easy. Tried to throw a bit of a fake, but Nouns have not bit down. George trying to play ahead of the smoke, and Case Serrano gets floored. There's no one spacing quite quick enough to go for that trade, and Carson went overlooked. George even taking that through the smoke in CT. Furia not able to scale properly onto this bomb site. Have to deal with Carson, but Junior, in fact, finds another one on the spam. That CT smoke has proven to be their undoing, but Art going in for that plant. Cello there to cover. This is still recoverable here for Furia. Junior's holding down the right line, but he might need to get a flick if Cello is the first one making contact. Art's afraid. He knows he can't really push forward, but at the same time, the numbers advantage is too much to deal with. Art falls and Nouns on nine. I have no idea how K. Serato is the first man going through a smoke of all players, and then there's no one behind him. Yeah. This is, that, that's actually mental. They called the time on that execute. They threw their util, but spacing is off for Furia. 
felt for sure that if, if George was going to go for a swing like that, there should have been someone right behind Keserato for that. Or some nades, anything like it, right? Of course, they didn't have that util, but that's the problem. And the cherry on top is that, you know, two players just end up getting spammed through smoke for, for that execute there from Fury. They just didn't have the manpower to properly scale in, flush out Carson, get, up, set, get set up actually on the bomb site itself. Mm. And the thing is, Carson's numbers look really bad when you look at the 517, but the fact that he's staying alive in these positions, the fact that he's still willing to get aggressive... Oh, you know, those even, were critical kills. Even in the previous round, the Molotov down mid so that he can hide behind it and actually get aggressive towards Ash. Yeah. This is a very important play that he's made. Carson, again, yes, he has... I, I, I won't lie, he did drop the ball a little bit in the first half, but right now you can see his impact on the server beyond the numbers. I mean, everybody was struggling on that T side yeah, there for now. It is but true. <laughs> now the struggles have hit the... The shoes on the other foot, rather. Mm. I don't know that many Panthers wear shoes. Now of glasses, so I know they accessorize. You just have to make sure this is not the round you slip on. We've seen so many half by banana peels from teams. This can't be one of them. George waiting, position perfect, good for one. Not the second, great damage across two different players, but is it going to be picked up on? The deck nines and the hero AK can still be incredibly deadly, but look at this rotation. Right back to the B-bomb side, that's the plan. Remember, Nouns has been quick to vacate. They've been very comfortable going for these retake style plays, but now that Carson's got that information, maybe not so quick. If they smoke CT, Junior's Molotov should be able to stop Furia long enough. Unless the timing is off by a lot. And he's even holding down the angle already. Junior's been given space because Furia can't pull the trigger fast enough. Junior, however, can. Molotov not deployed. He's stuck around the corner. Will not be able to hit that second shot, but the nade is good. Keeps them away, stops them from planting a while longer. Fallen had to be the man to cross over, and as he does do so, will be able to plant the bomb. Keserato has an AK, he needs to show up right now. Needs to come up big with the multi frag. His teammates are locked in. Keserato located, and now he's being given the chance. Good for two already. A two on two back into it. Yuri's giving him the assist, and Keserato now just needs to find Marky. That's all that separates them. Yuri on the AWP flashed up as well. This is going to be troublesome. He's swinging around. Oh. Right in the corner he goes and it's a nick of time as Marky almost had the defuse if the flash had just gone a little way further. Could have been a different story. I mean, that is so, so close there for Marky. Felt like he made actually kind of the right play. Knew it wasn't really properly planted there for Yuri and it's milliseconds. If even that, that separates them and Nouns from being able to get a round back, but Furia with that half by banana peel breaking in and Keserato doing so much work from the back of the bomb site. Big step a moment from him, yeah. And this is that they give him the AK and just sit, tell him to sit at the back of the bomb site, let him play it out comfortably. He had the best weapon. Mm. You know, you had to rely on him. He's, I mean, he's probably the best rifler on this team as well, so you couldn't have asked for safer hands. Say probably like it's much in doubt. It, <laughs> I mean, history would prove you right. Yeah, I mean, but nouns now have to start to question themselves, right? Because their money isn't fantastic. You're going into this one with five sevens. You're going into this one with two rifles. A lot of utility, but is there a play behind it? It felt like they couldn't make no mistakes if they wanted to maintain this run. Fury were having some troubles breaching bomb sites, but it was a half by that finally gets them to 12. One more round. That's all they're asking for. Even playing ahead of the util down towards Banana Fall and maintaining control. But now it's look to actually throw a lot of presence their direction. They have Junior on this AWP that they want to try and set up. So far, they haven't really been contending the mouth of Banana as much. Carson just seems to be the man who they send forward as a lamb to be sacrificed. Junior, this would be the time to start hitting some nutty shots, as the kids call it. George around the corner, shadow spotted. 
ducking into certain death and junior still right behind quesarado has been left to lurk it does feel like nouns is losing control and it feels like they're losing this map as well Marky low, tagged up, located, and Yuri is taken down. Maybe Marky's got it in him, but when he misses that shot, it's all gone. Junior is in an impossible retake. How on earth do you bridge this back? A one on four, you said it's impossible. I'd say you're right. But there's Fallen, a little too wide for that angle. I saw the player lingering down bottom B. That'll be Keserato to try and link up late. But there's no kit. One recovered now. But he basically has to run it straight into this bomb sign. Hope Fury miss every single shot on him. That smoke is going to last for far too long for him to actually get in. And it does look like Fury will finally be able to close a convincing CT side start from Fury. But even if there were some shakes towards the end, there will be no upset in their opening round. It does feel like Nouns was just a smidgen away from making that entire comeback possible. A little bit of an over-rotate maybe, but you know what? The panel's better at breaking this down than I.